again uh, following up functions and if statements. In this video we're going to go ahead and talk about switch statements. Now, switch statements are very similar to if statements. Um, you have seen them in your other classes and other languages before. Uh, switch statements are basically hashed if statements uh, as far as how they're handled by the compiler. They're a bit faster than if statements. Uh, they also have a different structure and are, are treated differently. Um, now in Swift there are a few differences between other languages that we're going to go ahead and go over here. Let's start with a variable var name equals Sally. Now just like other languages when setting up a switch statement you have to say okay what value am I going to be uh, looking at for my comparisons. And let's go ahead and we're going to say you're going to look at name. We want the switch statement to look at the name variable and check the different cases. And just like other languages, uh, switch statements can really only be used to say does is this true? Does this match? Okay. Uh, so I can go ahead in this case we're going to say case Sally. So if name equals Sally, which it does, as we know, it's going to run this code. Hmm. Uh, and then we have our default where If none of the cases match, we will end up at the default. Now, immediately I want to point out that something some of you may notice is I don't have a break statement. Now, if I go ahead and run this, it'll only print Hello Sally. Break, the break keyword, is not required in Swift. It is optional. It is assumed that you are breaking. So I do not need that. I can have it if I want. Then the uh, other thing you notice here is I don't have a break statement, yet I don't see fall through. Fall through meaning that if multiple cases match, it'll keep falling through to them. Uh, the break statement normally handles that in other languages. In this case, you don't need it. Now, Swift has something regarding fall through that is different than most languages, and that's that you can specify I want you to fall through to the next statement. Okay? So let's go ahead and let's run this. Hello Sally, I don't know you. Okay? If you put fall through, it overrides the optional break and says, okay, fall through to the next one. If I were to instead have case Bob print my name is name, okay. and I were to then say fall through on Sally and run this, go over here and run it, you said hello Sally, so we name equated to Sally, so we printed hello Sally, and then we had a fall through, so we fell through to the immediate next case, which was Bob, doesn't matter whether or not we match Bob, we are telling code that we want it to fall through to the next one and it wrote my name is name which is Sally so hello Sally my name is Sally yep. now let's go ahead and let's get rid of fall through now you can have just like other languages multiple cases stacked let me go ahead and say John not the right syntax. What it needs to be is, and that's the difference here. Um, in other languages you would go ahead and see it written as this if you wanted to stack multiple cases. In Swift you actually go ahead and on a single case line put your different case values that you want to check to see if it equates. So now if I go ahead and run this it'll say hello John. If I sort of be Sally, it'll say hello Sally. 
And if this were to say Michael and run it, I don't know you. Okay. Uh, of course, here I could go ahead and say fall through. Okay. And if I run this, it'll still say I don't know you. But if we change this to Bob, it will hit the Bob, say my name is Bob, and then fall through to I don't know you. And that right there is just a brief uh, little touch on switch statements. As you can see, the syntax is pretty similar to other languages. Uh, the biggest differences being how you go ahead and you stack multiple case cases. Um, you put them on one line, you use the comma, as opposed to writing case on its own line with each of the different cases. Uh, and then the fall through keyword and the fact that break is optional.